media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is home ownership consultant Ross Kay from the WealthyHomeowner.ca, Canada's authority on home ownership. Welcome back to the show, Ross. And thanks for having me back, Jim. Ross, we're going to single on a single province and market each week. This week, we'll take a look at toronto jim in scarborough asks my realtor tells me that prices jumped again in september and especially for single detached homes is the price decline trend ross has mentioned now reversing no it's it's not reversing uh not reversing jim uh i don't know who you're getting your information from uh but uh obviously it's uh false misleading and deceptive so hopefully it's not a realtor because if it's a realtor, you should contact the Real Estate Council of Ontario. The forms are online to issue a complaint and issue a complaint. Ask the, re- the realtor to prove what they're saying, or you should issue a complaint. I know this morning Jason Mercer was on uh, BNM Bloomberg, and he was looking pretty scared. I encourage all the listeners to, to go to BNM Bloomberg and pull up uh, the Toronto Real Estate Report. And, uh, and watch Jason Mercer talk to the reporter. He should be scared. He's scared because they know now that they've been caught and the truth is going to come home to roost. So what you didn't hear him say is always more important, Jim, than what he actually says. So let me say that again. By selectively leaving out the information home buyers need to make a rational, informed decision about the housing market, and about whether or not to buy a house. They are selectively leaving out the most critical information that you need. Not only are they leaving it out, but it's worse than that. They're proactively trying to get you to see something that isn't true. Let me explain it to you this way. In uh, When I look at our charts, because again, remember, we measure everything from the home buyer's perspective. Because prior to 1995, everything was viewed from the home buyer's perspective. If you if you asked us in uh, February of 2018 what had happened to home buyers in the greater Toronto area. This is your real estate board. Uh Jim, you're in Scarborough. Scarborough is part of the city of Toronto under the MLS system owned by the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board. Scarborough is part of the city of Toronto. Not the Treb staff, not the GTA staff, the city of Toronto staff. Okay, but if you had asked us Back in February of 2018, what were, what, what were home buyers doing now versus what they were doing at the peak of the market way back in May of 2017? So, so virtually a year before. Well, we would tell you they're spending $140,000 less. They're spending $140,000 less. Yet if I pull up the Toronto Real Estate Board's, uh, market watch from February of 2018, the month where we would tell you Home buyers are spending a hundred and forty thousand dollars less than they were of May the previous year. You couldn't find that in this report. I encourage your listeners to go to the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board dot com dot C A T R R E B dot C A. Click on their stat, click on their market watch art archive, and pull up the February of twenty eighteen report. Remember, I'm telling you now prices are down. $140,000, home buyers are spending $140,000 less when this report is being released. And here's what this report said. The first, the, there is no mention of price until the fourth paragraph, over three quarters of the way down the written words. But this is what they say about price to start off the discussion. The MLS Home Price Index Composite Benchmark was up 3.2% on a year-over-year basis, year basis for the Toronto real estate market 
area as a whole. We've just told you prices, home buyers were spending $140,000 less and they're telling you prices are up 3.2% year over year. They go on to say this growth was driven by the apartment and townhouse market segment. Interesting, because if there was growth in apartment and townhouse market segment, it would mean the average price would have decreased because those are the cheapest houses in the Toronto Real Estate Board's market. But they tell you just the opposite a second time, with annual benchmark price increases of 18.8% and 7.5% respectively. At the same time, Jim, that home buyers are spending $140,000 less, the Real Estate Board is giving you three positive year-over-year readings. Then it goes on to say single-family detached and attached benchmark prices were down slightly compared to February of 2017. Didn't tell you, even with those ones, no no numbers mentioned. Even there, they didn't tell you prices were down. On average, the home buyers were spending 140000 less from peak which was just the previous year. The overall average selling price in February was down 12.4%. Ah, here we go, year over year, to 767000 That's not really true either, but that's how they want to report their average price, so you can't criticize how they report their average price. But this is the decline is buried behind three claims the prices were rising. Then it goes on to say, however... Putting aside the price spike reported the first quarter of 2017, it is important to note that February's average price remained 12% higher than it was two years ago, which represents an annualized increase of well above the rate of inflation for the last two years. Now, if you don't think that this fourth paragraph, before they get into the price, where in a paragraph not a single quote appears from, uh, who was the president back then? It was Tim Siriano, I believe. He wasn't quoted once using a number. Why? Because the Real Estate Council of Ontario would charge him if he did. Even Jason Mercer wasn't foolish enough to be quoted with a number. He went on to give some vague uh, positive spin in the market. As we move further into the spring and summer months, growth in sales and selling prices is expected to pick up relative to last year. Expect stronger price growth to continue. Well, you know something, folks? If folk, if prices are, if home buyers are spending $140,000 less on average, yet every single person in the universe tells you the prices are rising, you're going to believe prices are rising. You are not going to believe the truth because there's no one talking the truth. There is no one out there telling you the truth. The truth is, and this is not debatable, a child with a calculator could come up with this number. Home buyers were spending $140,000 less on average while the composite benchmark goes up. Now, let me let you in on a little secret why a group of real estate agents fought the benchmark price. It is specifically for this reason. The benchmark price is an annual rate of change, and they compare an annual rate of change in a year-over-year com- comparison. The average selling price are the houses that are purchased in an individual month in a year-over-year comparison. Not once in that report did they explain the difference. They rely upon you to read the footnotes, to be able to interpret the footnotes, to read the methodology of how they do things. They know you will never do it. Why would you do it? Did the press do it today? Did you see one single news report that exposed the Toronto real estate for, for, for stating factually provable lies? We saw a comment today from uh, one of the BNN Rockstar Realtors where he claimed single detached homes had been stalled at $1.3 million, and all of a sudden the average single detached home was now worth $1.4 million in September. And we're looking at our data and said, well, that's amazing considering home buyers are spending no more today than they were all the way back in, in May. In Practically speaking, we are now into our fourth month of a correcting market in Toronto. Now, what's funny about these stats, Jim, is how they work. And anyone who understands MLS stats knows the magic that's involved with. Because, you see, while sales are declining, prices increase. It's got nothing to do with house prices. It's got to do with the group of buyers that are acting in a given month. So what that means, Jim, is that this September, 
You won't read this in a newspaper. All of the people that have been out there jumping on the gun to get their broker faces on TV today, willing to lie to you to try to get you to believe that they know what they're talking about. Let me tell you the story of what happened. So last September, in total, uh, there were, uh, last September, 20, there were 11,083 uh, homes sold by members of the Greater Toronto Real Estate. This year, there were 9,046. 2,000 fewer sales. Let that sink in. 2,000 fewer sales. But all you hear is spin, spin, spin. Oh, the mark. There weren't 11,000 sales because there weren't enough homes listed for sale, they tell you. Now, when there's a lot of home, when there's not enough homes listed for sale at other times, they're going to give that as a reason why house prices rise. They're going to have a series of different answers for the exact same change in market measures. The truth of the market, the truth of the matter is, we just saw another $2,000 slowdown in the Toronto housing market. Okay? You saw another drop of 2,000 stuff. This is the fourth consecutive month of a falling housing market. But what they also don't tell you is this. Did you know that last last uh, September, last September, even though there was 2,000 more sales, there were only 412 homes purchased, over $2 million. The ultra-luxury class home, last September, only 412 were sold, which was still a lot, but it was still 412. Well, did you know this year there were 583 sold? 583 sold. Did anyone tell you that there are 1,500, or excuse me, 1,600 fewer single detached homes purchased this September versus last September? No. Now, if you think about this, Jim, last September, there were 55, 5,559 single detached homes purchased by home buyers, uh, in the greater Toronto, uh, with the Toronto real estate. Only 412 of those were over two hundred thousand, two million dollars. This year, even though there was only thirty nine hundred single detached homes purchased, five hundred and eighty three of them were over two million dollars. Ultra luxury class. Anyone smelling a rat? How do you get how do you get a four hundred thousand dollar increase or a three hundred fifty thousand dollar increase for September of twenty 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 to September of twenty twenty one on single detached homes? Well it's really simple. You count more $2 million homes, and you ignore the other ones. You, you shade them. Let's not ignore them. Let's just shade them. Their share of the total sales will be less. The share of sales increased for homes over $2 million. That doesn't mean homes increased by any a dollar. It means that the buyers of $2 million homes doubled their share of the sales of single detached homes. That's what happened, Jim. And because that share of sales doubled, the average price increased. It had nothing to do with house prices. Oh, and don't, don't, don't get, don't get fooled, Jim. Because when you go to the condo apartment segment, it's even more fun. Even more fun. And this is how you look at it, Jim. In September of 2020, there were 2,367 condo apartments sold by Trev. This year, there were 2,664 apartment sold. That's right. They increased 300. Now, at first you would think that would drop the average price for all the homes that were purchased, wouldn't you, Jim? Oh, no, that's not how MLS magic works, because MLS magic is a heat-seeking missile aimed to find the market that they're after. So if you scroll down in that report and you're looking for, uh, a, let's see, you're looking for what? Apartments. We're looking for condo apartments, aren't we? So I'm scrolling down to condo apartment, and I see, oh, that's interesting. There were 1,792 condo, apart, apartments, uh, uh, par, condo apartments purchased uh, this year in the city of Toronto. Hey, that's, isn't that your area, Jim? The city of Toronto? City of Toronto? I think that's what you said. You, you're Scarborough, aren't you? Well, did you know last year there was only 953? Well, what did I just say? I said there was uh, this year, condo apartments in September, City of Toronto was 1792. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong number because it'll get to the next section. Last year, there was 1549. Oh, okay. So I've got, um, let's see what I've got here. Condo apartments September, I've got City of Toronto goes from, it's 1792 this year. 
last year, it was 1549. Well, that sounds about what? 200 and 220 extra? Well, I wonder where those 220 extra came from. I wonder where those 220 extra came from. Well, let's scroll down to the Toronto area. Wow, that's amazing. Did you know, Jim, that the Toronto Central District, which has the highest average condo selling price in the city of Toronto, went from 953 purchases to 1176? Well, it, isn't that 220? So are you telling me almost all of those extra condos happen to be purchased from one single area called Toronto Central, which has the highest average purchase price of all of the areas in Toronto and all of the community? In the, in the, the, the GTS reported by Trab. That's right, Jim. That's how the magic works. It works like this every single month. And unless you do a detailed dive into the data and you know how to read it, you can believe the narrative. That's why I read to you from way back in February of 2018, because this is important. Prices peaked the way that we measure them. Okay. So the way that we measure them, May of 2017. By the February of 2018, home buyers were spending $140,000 less. This is not debatable. This is in the data. At the same time, the Toronto Real Estate Board convinced every newspaper in Canada, every television station in Canada, they actually convinced the government that the prices were rising 3.2% on a year-over-year basis. Townhouse market, apartments were up 18.8%. Townhouses up 7.5%. That's what they were, oh, and single detached, they were only down slightly. Yet we're recording a historic $140,000 decrease that home buyers were spending. You don't think this matters? Well, listen to this. Do you wonder why you can't buy a single detached home in Canada today, Jim? Well, you can't buy it because the bureaucrats who are, who are supplying the political leaders with housing market intelligence believe what I just told you about Trent what the Toronto Real Estate Board told them. And those talking points were funneled through to the politicians. And the politicians then acted on irrational information, information that no one could substantiate. Basic statistics created by a real estate trade association for salespeople. So here's what you should have heard today from the Toronto Real Estate Board. The Toronto Real Estate Board has been correcting as an MLS system for four months. House prices have declined on average because home buyers have been spending less for four consecutive months. You can cherry pick. You can move sales from August of $2 million homes into September and get a positive spin on the market. You think it doesn't matter? I'm going to tell you to go back to that February of 2018 report where all the spin in that report caused the housing market three months later to start to reverse in the greater Toronto area. Had the Toronto Real Estate Board simply said, hey folks, home buyers are spending $140,000 less than they were last May. Take what you want from that, but that's what's going on. We also need to be honest with you and tell you right now that we we are now selling about uh, 20... $30,000, 30,000 fewer homes on an annual basis than we were at the market's peak. So that means you don't have to rush out as much. So not only is the market slowing, fewer homes are being purchased at an almost historical uh, uh, drop in, in pay, uh, drop in sales volume, but price, home buyers are now spending $140,000 less. Do you really think we'd be in the mess that we're on today if the public was simply told the truth, Jim? I know that the Toronto housing market wouldn't be in a mess if people were simply told the truth and allowed to make up their mind instead of being manipulated. You are being manipulated by a trade association for salespeople, a trade association's whose sole job, its articles of incorporation as recorded at the government offices, state that their only purpose is to improve the income of their members. You are being manipulated by stats. You are being, being manipulated by a, a failure of your provincial regulators to charge inexperienced realtors who believe they can go in public and make fraudulent statements to the public. I get to say that because we own the data 
that proves it. We would love them to challenge us. You are being manipulated. Your politicians are being manipulated. Everyone's being manipulated. And when this comes falling down, as all the as it's crumbling right now, when it comes to the ground, the public needs to seek retribution. The public needs to demand answers. Politicians need to demand how they could be so manipulated by a trade association where house buyers are spending $140,000 less, but the local trade association for realtors are claiming prices are up 3.2, 7.5, and 18.8%. That, Jim, is what you need to remember from today. We'll have more with Ross K. right after this. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ross K. Ross, staying with Ontario this week. Gene in Oakville says, We heard investors were buying up homes at a pace not seen since 2017. Will that have an impact on people like us who only want one home, that being our first? I can understand how you would be upset with this, Gene. I see on social media how people are upset with this, and I I, I find it uh, disgusting that it, this information has been translated and analyzed uh, in the manner that it has been. So here's what I'm going to tell you what you need to know from this report. First of all, this report is from Equifax. Equifax is, is a company who makes money based on your credit scores. They produce the credit score. You don't know how they actually produce the credit score because it's a secret process, but that's how they make their money. They are now trying to get into a new market to increase the revenues of Equifax. That's what's going on here. They're trying to say that they can tell you what's happening with the housing market, that they can tell you what's happening with the mortgage market something that two years ago they have never mentioned in their in entire existence until CMHC felt they need to use a skewed little data set from Equifax to try to come up with some some uh, commentary that they weren't capable of coming up with themselves. By the way, they could have called us and we would have told them. So let me debunk this narrative right now. First of all, I believe that what they quoted was it was a 7.7% increase in people with a Ford mortgage. In other words, they were saying People are now owning three investment properties. That had increased 7.7%. Hmm, interesting. Okay. So they are also said that uh, people with more than one home loan account for only 16% of the mortgage market. Oh, so now it's not 7.7%. It's 7.7% of 16%. So, and that's only the increase. So if you took 16 and you divided it by uh, 1077 and you multiplied it by 707, you're looking at a 10% increase in that little tiny dip, a, a little tiny differential, 0.1%. That's what they're actually saying. So instead of 16%, it would have been 15.9%. Yeah, interesting. Now, I have to explain to you what happened. This report that they let out, was 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20. So it actually had 2017 when people were, again, caught at the turn in, in the greater Toronto area. And uh, in that in that year, there was a 12.8% increase in four mortgages, people with, with uh, four, four mortgages. And there was a 6.2% increase in people with, uh, with uh, three, second and third mortgages. Hmm, interesting. Funny, there's only a little tiny 1.7% increase in people with the first mortgage. Wow. So imagine what they're basically saying is wealthy people were taking out more mortgages at the same time that first time buyers really were on unchanged. Hmm. I wonder what that did to the average price, the average purchase price in 2017. Here's how, this is how ludicrous their, their, their assessment is. They actually have some data that proves the average house price didn't increase. More expensive homes were actually being purchased. Now, you also have to remember this, Gene. In 2017, people were caught at the turn. The market was so active that people were purchasing their second home before the first home was sold. Just the opposite of what, what has gone on for the last 50 years. There's only these little tiny short windows, few months, where people are foolish enough to be convinced by their real estate agent to do that. 
Okay, there was a little tiny uh, portion way back in uh, 1989, and there's a little tiny portion in 2017, and there's a little tiny portion again here in 2021, but not to the degree as it was in 2017, which is what their chart actually shows. Their numbers actually show this if you look at it. So price increase, year-over-year price gains, are directly correlated to the number of sec- increase in second and fourth mortgages. Hmm, that is really amazing. They didn't mention this in their report, did they? They didn't mention it. This is how clueless they are to their own data. This is how economists have no understanding how housing markets work. This is a false report. Now, why this matters? You can be sure that the new minority government for for the the Liberal Party is going to be told this by bureaucrats. It's not going to be questioned. They're going to say the analysis from Equifax was true. They're not going to give you the alternative explanation that I just gave you or the fake house price illusion. The explanation I just gave you proves they're not even going to question what I just gave you. They're only going to say what Equifax told them. The government is then going to say, oh my gosh, people are buying, uh, investors are buying in the market again. Well, that would be a good thing on the rental front, wouldn't it? That means we must have a patty surge of new listings come to the market for rental. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. You want to know why? Because it's not included in their report either. It's not included in any of the mainstream media reports. This is why. When people moved out of large urban areas because they believed they were going to continue to work from home, people in Toronto moved out as far away as London. Now, we understand no one is going to commute an hour and three quarters or two hours or two and a half hours, depending on the time of the day, from London to Toronto every day. So what would they do instead? Wow, why don't we buy one of these new small tiny condos so that if one of the spouses is going to be working in Toronto, they are still have, they've still got themselves covered. So when the work from home phenomenon ends, as it will, because this, that's not the, do not assume that a business leader is going to trust their employees to work hard at home on their own. It will not happen. They will return to the office. These people have purchased a condo so that they can work at home while still the other spouse probably will be a stay at home spouse, stays in Cambridge, Waterloo, London, Burlington, Guelph, wherever they purchased, Barry for that matter. Maybe even Peterborough, because there was some nice new homes going in up in Peterborough. Hmm, I wonder if those houses skewed their MLS average price. We are talking about a bucket of nonsense, Gene, that you have no idea. But it's all going to come down, tumbling down. It is all going to come tumbling down. That Equifax report was based on the opinion of Equifax, who is clueless to how the home trading market works. They made guesses to try to to answer uh, what they're seeing in the data. They can't prove it. They're just guessing. And their guesses are wrong. I just told you went on what went on. People moved from, believed they were going to go work from home, so they moved out of Toronto into a nice suburban neighborhood, and they purchased a condo in Toronto so that they could come back to work three or four days a week. It's an economical thing to do when you only have 1.5% interest rates for five years guaranteed. You virtually have no gamble. And at the same time, let's not forget your your local realtors who, while housing prices or home buyers are spending less and less each month, are claiming house prices are still right. Would you make a different decision than those people did? I don't think so. Again, Speak the truth. Tell the public what's going on. Don't mislead stakeholders, excuse me, politicians, who are going to enact policies will impact the Canadian family. The only reason we're in this mess that we're in today is because organized real estate has never explained to the government how the MLS system works. That's the only reason. The only reason that you don't have a single detached home to live in yourself today, Gene, is organized real estate. No other reason. Because if a government knew that, knew the truth, and they didn't build the single detached homes that they needed to be built, they would never become elected because the public would be, would know about it. No rational home, no rational family 
currently that currently does not own a single detached home in the in Canada would vote for a government who specifically is going to keep them from owning a single detached home. And not only that, it's going to ensure if they ever want to take that step on the property ladder, it's going to cost them more than it should. No government would do that as long as the public have the ability to hold the government accountable with their vote. You've never had that. Reports like this from Equifax only makes it worse because they give bad analysis on a partial data set because they don't know what's actually contained in the sales information across Canada. We have uh, another question as we continue with Ontario. Nico in London asks, L-Star, the London St. Thomas area realtors announced house prices had jumped over 22% in September. While this is not as discouraging as the almost 40% gains they reported earlier this year, it appears things are still crazy. Can Ross comment? You're being, I don't know what, I don't know what to say. What was it? What was this person's name, Jim? Nico. Nico, Nico. Okay, so so probably uh, Italian heritage out in London. So, uh, Nico, um, look, I, I I don't know what to tell you. In in May, the average home buyer was spending six hundred and forty thousand. In September, the average home buyer spent six hundred and forty thousand. September was a mar- was was a year over year decline in sales. Okay, they're telling you now that prices are up year over year twenty two percent. If you look back in uh, Back in May, it was, you're right, it was a 40, 41% year over year increase, they were telling you. Understanding, Nico, in May, they were spending 640,000, and in September, they're spending 640,000. What was that 40% year over year gain in May is only a 22.6% gain in September. Home buyers are still only spending $640,000. Prices are not up. Nico, if your stockbroker or the TSX released um, stock price quote, stock price change, the same way that organized real estate releases their supposed average price, average house price change, those stockbrokers would be locked up and the key would be thrown away. It would be the greatest financial uh, fraud in history. But your local real estate agents have done this for 50 years. Except, except, Nico, they used to do it Legally, and any in, in, in inquisitive home buyer prior to 2000 and uh, 2005 could have asked, "Hey, are you working for me, or are you working for seller?" The seller today, it's a convoluted mess of uh, answers, descriptions, paperwork forms. Look, Nico, I saw paperwork this week that I just shook my mind at. There is no way that a home buyer could sign the amount of forms the Interior Real Estate Association is putting before them and understand what they're actually signing. The the clauses that exist two or three years ago have all been changed, altered, little adjectives put in, a couple of words dropped to, to completely skew the original intent of the form. I can tell you this, Nico. There are some great real estate brokers in London, and they don't really understand the magnitude of fraud that is being completed completed on people who live in London and St. Thomas. They would never want to do that because they've never done it in the past. Up until two years ago, the London St. Thomas Association of Realtors just kept plugging along. They, They didn't mislead the public until the Canadian Real Estate Association got a hold of them. And that started around May of this year. They started producing reports for the London St. Thomas Association of Realtors. The same type of reports that they were now were re- are including for all many real estate boards across Canada that they've never ever done in their history. Nico, in May, the average home buyer was spending six hundred and forty thousand, and in September they spent a six hundred and forty thousand. This is not debatable. It's in their own printed materials from Elstar. It's just they try to have a narrative. Like, I, if you go back and listen to the first section of this today's interview, you're going to hear how the Toronto Real Estate Board totally manipulated the buying public, totally manipulated the press, totally manipulated politicians, totally manipulated the central banker, the policymaker, totally manipulated all the bank um, uh, ec- economics team, totally man- manipulated them in February of 2018. Because if they didn't manipulate them, at least one of those parties would have reported 
was a $140,000 decrease in what the average home buyer was spending. Now, in your instance, in your instance, Nico, prices are actually declining now in London. They went negative in September. Now, they went negative in a way that your local realtors are never going to explain to you. But that's actually what's going on. And the reason for that is, is because the number of new homes included on new builders with homes that do not exist to be built has dropped on the Realtors Association of London St. Thomas. That's why those homes are no longer available to be sold. So that means it's dropped. Look, the average selling price, the average selling price uh, in London St. Thomas, MLS single family market, is $690,000 single family market. Year to date, the average price is $685,000. Year to date, year to date. I just told you that they released today was uh, $640,000. That sounds like a $40,000 drop to me. You have to watch how these stats are calculated, especially in small MLS systems like this, because they get breakdown. They include all their MLS. You believe that's all residential. It's not. Then they may use a term like single family. Uh, you may be confused what that means because each MLS district in Canada will have their own definition, a single family, a single family, single family market, residential, resale. Every single MLS system is different. People go on the, on the news as that, and the news is reporting as if they're all the same, the same thing. When it's not, it's like you're calling a Chevy a Cadillac. It's not the same thing. You're calling a Toyota a Lexus. It's not the same thing. Well, you know, in both cases, it may have the same underpinning, but it's not the same thing. And this is exactly what's going on here. So London has rolled over. I don't care what they tell you. I don't don't care what's going on. I've got family who lives in London, St. Thomas. So I know what I'm saying here is the truth. I mean, obviously, I'm telling them the exact same thing. Um, I don't really know what else to say to you, Nico. Um, maybe in your area, I'd call... Uh, Veto up at Century 21, what's his name, Campanola, Campanola, something like that. He's been around, if, he's, if he hasn't retired, he's been around a long time. He should be able to explain to you how uh, how the average purchase price is. In other words, he was around way back when. Um, no, house prices are not up 22% in September. Home buyers are spending less today, the way that we measure it, in London than they were in May. This isn't debatable. This is a fact. You must now be preparing for what's coming ahead. All listeners in every part of Canada, because like I have said on this show now for over two years, this is a singular opportunity to watch all MLS systems work in the exact same way. All housing markets are now correcting. Oh, by the way, folks, one little teaser. Did you happen to notice that sales had increased in in Calgary and sales had decreased in Vancouver? The purchase of houses in Calgary by home buyers increased by 300 the purchase of sales in Vancouver dropped by what 300 wow i wonder what that would do to the average price do you think that would make the average price drop folks i guess we'll have to wait until the 15th when the canadian real estate association speaks on that topic ross thank you so much for the update and thanks for having me on, Jim. And if I if I don't talk to you before, I, I hope you have a, a wonderful Thanksgiving. You too. My guest has been home ownership consultant Ross K from the wealthyhomeowner.ca. If you have any questions for Ross, he's glad to answer them. You can send them to info at housestreet.com. Find us on Twitter at House Street. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. We're also on Facebook when it works. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.